Hello. Once again, we would like to thank you for tuning into the Living Strong Television broadcast. Once again, my name is Prophet Scotty Lee Johnson, and we would also like to thank each and every one of you for your support and your love that you have shown throughout the time and patient based upon everything that God has done concerning the Whosoever Will Outreach Ministry and the Living Strong Television Network. On tonight, we are doing a special broadcast. Surprise, surprise. And for each and every one of you that are watching, you'll notice that I have somebody with me, which is the pastor of Jesus First Community Christian Fellowship Church yes. located right here in the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. And I have with me none other than Dr. Eric Mason. How are you, Dr. Mason? I'm wonderful today, Prophet. The Lord is good. So it's been pretty good, huh? It has been wonderful. God has been blessing us and God has been pouring out on us and we just think it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you on this setting today. I am just so overwhelmed for the opportunity and for this time that we're going to share together tonight. We would like to welcome you to the Living Strong Television broadcast and thanking you for this opportunity to be able to sit with you and interview you on tonight. Yes, sir. And we would like to apologize to each and every one of you and thank you for your patience with us in getting set up and starting this. We have some exciting things that we're going to talk about on tonight. Dr. Mason and myself, based upon what God is doing in his life concerning his will and each and every one of you that are watching. And so I'm going to be asking Dr. Mason yes, some sir. questions on tonight, and he is going to be responding, and we are going to have a little bit of fun, but also at the same time, we would like for you to make sure that you stay tuned to the up-and-coming events in which we are going to announce yes. at the end of this meeting. Yes. But first of all, Dr. Mason, I would like to ask you a question. I would like for you to tell us about uh, you and about your walk with uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that it must have started at an early age. Go ahead. Oh, oh my God. It has started at a very young age. Uh, the Lord has, you know, had a calling on my life from day one, coming up in uh, a Christian family and uh, having, uh, being attended, having to go to Sunday school and go through those <laughs> things that you don't like doing and getting up. And I came through uh, the early years of uh, where we had very strict people, strict grandmothers and strict mothers in the church. So we didn't have the opportunity to do a lot of things that a lot of people did. But um, I knew that God had a great call on my life early on because the pattern and the path that he took me on right. it just kind of led me a little different from everybody else and you always have this question in your mind <laughs> why why is things not working out for me like it's working out for all these other people and why is this happening to me and why am I going through this and why is this happening to me and why can't I be like the rest of these people so I knew that there was something different about me right. and I knew that there was something I didn't know at the time what it was but I do know that God had something for me in my early years. So I just kind of followed the path that he had me on. And, you know, as I followed Christ, it brought me to this place where I am today. Yeah. So those early stages for you, you know, growing up with your grandmother and in the family and all this and that. Yeah. Was it like um, strong discipline and, and, you know, based upon oh. your early calling, you know, what was the age that God really began to deal oh, with absolutely, you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, it, it very strict, you know, uh, coming up, no movies, no going out, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, we came up where you basically wore black all the time and the, the women had to wear the long dresses and, you know, that type of stuff. But And uh, there were a lot of things that I wanted to do but I couldn't do because of the discipline. Uh, it was always yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. It was always be in before the street light is off. You know, that era and that time where you just were very disciplined. You had to eat what was put before you. You didn't have a whole lot of choices about what you could and could not do. And, you know, one day, you know, just being in church, wanting more. Uh, I knew I wanted more of something, but didn't know what I wanted. Right. But I just knew it was something. You uh -huh. know, I keep mentioning this something, this something, because at an early age, you don't know what it is. You just know right. something is pulling at you, something is drawing at you. But, you know, and people will say, that boy is going to be a preacher one day. He's going to be a preacher. But 
I wasn't really wanting to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't wanting to do this ministry thing at all. <laughs> I had to tell you the truth, what I really what I really wanted to do was, you know, my uncle was a, you know, he worked in the our local community center where he would uh, at the parties he would be a disc DJ. Right. And I would help him with the records and in my mind I always wanted to have a club and, you know, be able to do all those things that I saw my uncle because he was kind of like my mentor and right. the person that I was trying to pattern after. So but even though I wanted to do that, mm -hmm. that wasn't what God had in store for me. Wow, say that yeah, again. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, you, you yeah, need to yeah, hear this. Did you yeah, hear that? Yeah. Listen to what he said. Yeah. He said that, he, I want you to hear this. Say that again. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't what God had in store for me. It was what I wanted. It was what you wanted. It was what I wanted. But, but it, it wasn't, wasn't what, what God, God had exactly <laughs> in store right. for you. That's exactly right. Oh, my yeah, God. That yeah, is so powerful. Yeah, yeah, and see, when you don't, um, you know, when you find this is when you know that God has a his hand on you, has a great call in your life because nothing that you want to do, it ever works out the way you anticipate it working out. Uh, yes, and it's always, that. it almost feels like, it's, it, you feel like you're two steps behind, but you also feel like you're too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. And, 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 you know, as I got old, I understood better. You know, God was keeping this flesh part of me under subjection and keeping it back. Wow. But he was causing my spirit to always be ahead. Right. So what happened was my flesh and my spirit had to connect to the place where God was able to show me specifically, hear me clearly, prophet, specifically uh -huh. what he had intended for me to be and what he wanted me to do. And once I, I, I saw it and I understood it, get this, I was not like most people. Most people they would have went along with it and said, you know what, God, okay. I didn't do that. I kicked against the prick. Right. I did not want to do it. <laughs> and the Lord himself had to put out his buckler, and he had to put his uh, his Holy Ghost rope around my neck <laughs> and pull me in. And, 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 uh, and, and I had to go through some traumatic stuff mm -hmm. in order to accept what God was saying to me because wow. I did not want to do what he wanted me to do, I was determined to do what Eric Mason wanted to do. Wow. Yeah. Evidently, that was a special call on your life for God to just have to really bring you up in that environment. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And in that atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. And then it reminds me of what the Bible declares about the Apostle Paul. You know, the, you know, the Lord said to him, it's hard to kick against the prince. It's very hard. And so yeah. that's an experience, I think, that's based upon a testimony Absolutely. that's relative to this time. Absolutely. Because there are many people, you know, that are out there and they're trying to figure out how can I get away mm. from God. They just can't get away. You can just they? can't do it. There's no <laughs> if, and, and, but about it. You cannot run. And what God will do is he will let something hit you so hard Oh wow! until you have no other choice but to yield to his will and to his promise. And, I, you know, I'll never forget it. I was on my way to uh, church, and um, at this time we were having rehearsal, and I was on my way to the church, and I was hit by an automobile. I was on my bicycle on my way to church, oh, and I was goodness. struck by a oncoming car from behind, right. and they left me there for dead. They ran me over. Wow. Uh, you know, I tore up the major all of my skin had come off my face from hitting the pavement. And, you know, when I did come to, I was laying in um, – Candler Hospital. I, I, I couldn't really speak, but I could hear the saints and my mom praying and pleading with God that God don't let him die. That's I kept hearing those words. It's almost like I could, you know, I, I couldn't move, I couldn't respond, but I could hear the saints praying. Right. And at the same time, I felt my spirit coming out of my body. But oh. I think it was a war going on that God was saying, you don't want to listen to me? I'll snatch you out of here. But the saints was praying, saying, God, whatever you do, don't let him die. Give him another opportunity. Mm. And at that moment, I had to say, God, if you give me another chance, I promise you, I'll go and do what you say <laughs> do. And it was from that point, yes, yes. once I came to, now, now wow. and, you know, and realized that I was still here on earth, from that point on, I knew then that God had 
great works in store for me and I had to do. So I'm no longer on my own time. I'm no longer on my own contract. I'm no longer on what Eric wants to do. Matter of fact, Eric is gone. It's now whatever Christ, whatever God says, whatever God commands, whatever God employs, whatever oh God put on the structure. I feel that. Whatever Watch God out. says. What, what, it's whatever, oh, whatever he says. God says. At oh, this man. point, that's what I have to do. Wow. There's no choice in that. Some people have a choice. Oh, God, I amazing. have lost the opportunity to have a choice. So I am wow. duty bound now to do what I'm doing. It's no, some people say, well, are you sure this is what God has called you to do? There is no question about whether this is God. I am absolutely confident that I'm operating solely on his will for my life. And I know indeed you are happy about that. Yes, sir. You know, in the Bible, you know, it talks about the 170 that walk with Christ Jesus and, and you know, and then it talked about the 12 and it talked about the one that was chosen. You know, Dr. Mason, I'd like to know, uh, when did you know that you were called? <laughs> well, as I just said just a few moments ago, I knew I was called from a child, uh -huh. but I didn't yield to the calling. But when God allowed this tragedy to come to me, at that point, wow. I knew then that I had to heed to the call. So those were the events those that Those were the led events that led me to, to the know that, that, you were chosen. that I was chosen by God to do this. And what God will do is, he doesn't give you specifics right. when he tells you to go. He mm -hmm. just tells you to go, and I'll be with you. That's uh -huh. the part I don't like right. because there's a lot of gray area. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gray area part is what I don't like with God talking about. You just go, and I'll be with you. Okay, God, where you want me to go at? D to do what? To, right. to, you know, I need you to give me detail. And, and that's the thing that makes me know that I'm not operating in the flesh because the flesh is always wanting to know in advance That's because right. now the flesh has the opportunity and the choice to say, well, if it's going to be like that, God, I ain't going. If it's going to be like that, I'm yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. So what God does is he, he kind of wants us to trust him confidently that if I say go, you trust my voice enough that's right. And you trust what I've done in your life wow. and what I've brought you from and what I've brought you through and what I've brought you to. If you have trusted me and you look back over your life and see where I have brought you from and to, at this point, if you knew it was nobody but me that did what would happen in your life, right. you couldn't do it, your mother couldn't do it, and, and there's no finances that could have done it, you had to solely rely on what God has already done and shown you in your life. So that's what I'm going on now. I'm banking on the fact that he bought me this far. I'm banking on the fact that he's done what he said he's going to do thus far, and he has not lied to me. He said God is not a man that he should lie. That's Neither right. son he, he does not have to repent on my behalf that's because right. everything he said, he's brought it to pass. He's not slack concerning anything that he's instructed me to do as a leader. Nothing, nothing at all. Well, I'll tell you what, I know that you are enjoying listening to Dr. Eric Mason right here. And I know right here at Jesus First Christian Community Fellowship Church in the beautiful city of uh, uh, Savannah, Georgia, God is doing great things with Dr. Mason. And yes. we're going to continue. And I know that you are feeling that anointing right now that's coming forth. And we thank you for continuing to be patient with each and every one of us. And we continue to pray that God continue to bless you as we continue. Now, Dr. Mason, I've got something to ask you that's kind of important a little bit here. Yes, sir. And it may be a little bit something that personal, but I think it delves a little bit deep. Yes. into your life. I want you to tell me how your wife, which is none other than the beautiful first lady, Sabrina Mason. <laughs> yes, sir. Wait a minute. I want you to tell me how she <laughs> has helped you in ministry and to help you carry out the vision right here at Jesus First Community Fellowship. Well, my wife has been my greatest cheerleader. Um, she's been the person that have cheered me on. She's been the person that have encouraged me. At the same time, she's also been the person that has rebuked me. She's been the person <laughs> that has corrected me. She's the person that uh, had the eyes to see things that I couldn't see. That's true. Uh, she was the one that kind of kept me grounded. Yeah. She's the person that keeps me focused on what I need to do because sometimes as a man of God, 
we get so focused on the things that God has called us to do that we sometimes lose, kind of lose our sense of living, our sense of oh, family, our God. sense of responsibility. That's right. We lose our sense because everything is spiritual. Everything mm -hmm. is the ministry. Everything, and, and 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 she's the person that keeps me reminded that God doesn't want me to rape our relationship right. for the ministry. Oh man! So oh, she kind of keeps me balance and keep me cut it's like cutting out a pattern she fine tunes and makes sure that i'm cut just right so that when i do stand up i can be a true man of god you know it don't get no plainer than that <laughs> i'm telling you i mean yeah, it's, it's yeah. almost just reminding me of the fact that it, this is just one of those things that is hard to find and the key word is grounded. I, oh yes, oh yes. And then on top of that, yeah. knowing that you got somebody in your corner gotta have it. That is rooting you on regardless of what it look like. That's exactly right. Because it get heavy in ministry. Oh, it does. It does. And it gets hard sometimes. Absolutely. And it's not easy. Not at all. Not at all. And so, in that process, I know that, you know, with what you've said, it just it just brings such a softness yeah. to the truth of what the strength Absolutely. in a relationship of a marriage means. Absolutely. And so, you know, it, it, it's really something because this really helped you to carry out the vision. Absolutely. And it, to help you to do what God has called you to do. Correct. And, and, I, and I will say, you know, in every ministry is different. And our, our ministries are uniquely a little different because my wife realizes she understands clearly what her place is in mm -hmm. my life. Wow. She knows that God has called me to be the pastor. Mm -hmm. She knows that God has called me to be the lead of this ministry. Right. And she makes it her business to make sure that she knows her place. Mm -hmm. uh, so often that we have a lot of problems in ministry where spouses don't know their place in the oh, body of Christ. God. And, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to acknowledge that. Right. Um, it, it didn't get there overnight, but in time it got there where uh, for many times she didn't understand where her place was and it's our place to ensure that they understand where their place is exactly. in the body of Christ I didn't let the people groom my wife I didn't let them decide what she should wear uh oh uh, wait yeah, wait yeah, Dr. Did, Mason yeah, oh no you yeah. done started something yeah, here tonight <laughs> oh thank you Lord <laughs> yes sir for such a yeah. revelation yes sir again yeah the key word was something that he said that was so very important. Yes. And it was that he did not let, say it again. I didn't let the people groom my wife. He did not let the people groom. No. This is very important. Absolutely. To having a successful relationship Absolutely. as well as a successful ministry. Absolutely. Yeah. And as long as the place is in the place of God's order, you cannot fail. That's exactly right. And so my hat is so much off to... You know, none other than Sister Sabrina to keep up the good work. Absolutely. Amen, Sister yeah. Mason. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Because you're doing a great job Absolutely. with making sure that Dr. Mason focus on God's will and what he's called y'all to do. You know, I see great things in store. I just feel this. Yes. And I just sense that level of elevation taking place like never before. Yes. Because it's not like a commonplace word that you have that right. you that you're sharing with us. Yes, sir. It's not just like a commonplace ministry. In other words, it feeds into that which Absolutely. is beyond the norm. Absolutely. And I think it's making a great difference. Yes. With you and what God is doing. Yes. Sir. Right here at Jesus First, Dr. Mason. And you know, um I'd like to ask you something. How, how did your ministry get started? Well, you know, I was actually pastoring a uh, Baptist church for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was really frustrated because I was really out of my, another time when God allowed me to do it for a season. Right. And my season had come to where it was time for me to move on. Uh -huh. And I was really out of my place in a lot of areas. Uh, you know, I was working on a job. I was pastoring that church, and I was the most unhappiest person in the world. And I would go to church on Sunday, yeah. and when I got up, I was sort of miserable, and I didn't enjoy. Um, and the Bible talks about that we shouldn't do this thing under any kind of constraint or uh, be to a place where we can't effectively minister to the people. That's right. And I had gotten to a, plate, a place of complacency where I was just going through the routine, and I was tired, and I needed God to do something for me. And I was in uh, Detroit, Michigan, in a hotel room 
where I was driving motor coaches during that time. And I took a family down to uh, Miami to do on a cruise. And I, I was in the hotel for a week alone. And I just said, God, I just need you to do something with me. I, I was pleading and begging with God to put me in the right place to give me some direction instructions because I had sent resumes all across the country. <laughs> no doors were opening for me. Nothing was happening the way it needed to. And while being in that room, I prayed all week and I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go out. I just wanted God to speak to me. And when I was in that room, the Lord took me to Matthew 633 and I'll never forget it. And he said, um, you know, um, but seek ye first right. the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I said, God, if I go back home, how am I going to tell my wife I'm going to leave the church where we were actually getting, having a salary and I had all of these in form of income coming in. And, and God says, you know, take no thought for what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear That's or how right. you're going to live. And right. uh, if I'm able to take care of the fowls in the air and I can take care of the lilies of the field, I can take care of you. Amen. And I, when I heard God say that, I said, well, God, so the Lord said, I release you from where you are into what I would have for you to do. Oh, yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. released me at that moment. And God gave me a plan in Detroit for what he wanted me to do when I got back to Savannah. And I'm here to tell you all that's listening to me today that God is a, a prayer answering God. And if you're sincere about wanting to hear from God and want direction and instruction, you have to pull yourself away from everything. Get away from everybody, the that's wife, right. the family, and just get with God himself and just spend some a long time, some consecrated time, That's some right. time of fasting and seeking God's face and waiting and wailing before God for him to give you an answer. That's and right. God spoke to my heart mm -hmm. and he told me what he wanted me to do. He gave me the name of this ministry and the name of the ministry is Jesus First. And uh, I, you know, I, I just wrote it down <laughs> and, and I came back home with that, you know, in my mind and and, you know, when I explained to my wife what was going to happen, you know, she was a little concerned, but I knew I heard God. Right. And because I heard God, me and her began to just search and pray right. for direction as far as where we're going to go. Because I, were already, I was already in a facility, but we didn't have a facility to come to. And the enemy started fighting us. And I knew then that God was speaking for real. That's right. Because mm -hmm. that's the... the um, response that you get from the enemy when he knows that God has given you instruction and in, and you embarking upon something great. So the enemy starts attacking you from every angle, from the family first. Then he starts attacking you from uh, finances and attacking you from people in general. Right. Because now who's going to believe you when you tell them what God has said and you're excited about what the Lord has spoken. You know, nobody's going to believe that because it's insane. It's not normal. It's not a part of our culture. It's not a part of what we see and what we know. And most people, if they can't conceive it, then as far as they're concerned, it can't be so. That's right. But God gave me clear, distinctive instructions, and that was to come back home. He released me. I turned in my resume at that church. I left that Sunday. And from that point on, we started and God blessed us. My wife came and she found the building that we're presently in. Uh -huh. And when she found this building, I walked in. It was an old warehouse. And it was had uh, an automobile shop. Oh, was it this building? This building right here oh, was okay. an automobile mm -hmm. shop. And uh, when we walked in here, was no windows, no doors, no air condition, no sheet chandeliers, no carpet, no anything. It was just grease, uh, engine pots, hubcaps, <laughs> and the whole nine yards. And when I walked in here, I said, girl, there's no way that we can have church in this building. This is not God. Mm -hmm. And I began to pray again, and God spoke to me. And he sent me to a dear friend who had just took a warehouse and re renovated it. And he said, Mason, I did this in six months' time. Now you go back and get to work for the kingdom of God. I got to work, <laughs> and here we are 11 years later. Building paid, furniture paid for, and God has blessed us, Ooh. and now we are on a major highway with, at, uh, with two acres of land. But just, de just December the 27th of, Je of 2012, God blessed us where we just purchased 10.43 acres more of land. Wow. So uh, now we are just preparing to build and preparing to Amazing. enlarge and preparing to, to uh, 
you know, educate and, and, and be able to facilitate in the community. So all of this took place just by obeying the voice of God and following God's instructions. Woo. Yeah. My Lord, did you hear that? Yes. That takes obedience. Absolutely. That takes obedience and just basically what Dr. Mason said, hearing God's instruction. Yes. And also having by your side someone that knows their place. You know, Dr. Mason, I am so excited about everything that is happening. And also, it is a beautiful location right off the main highway. Absolutely. This was the Lord's doing. And, and, and <laughs> nothing but vision and Absolutely. more vision. And then on top of that, you have such a beautiful sanctuary. You have such a beautiful sanctuary. Yes, sir. And I thank God for it. Indeed, it is. And so now let me ask you something. Now, now that God has done all this for you, now what is your vision for the ministry? Well, what we want to do now is we want to, there's a lot of crime and a lot of young men and young women that don't have that all you know, have the leadership ability and homes and families that wow. they can turn to. So what we want to do, <coughs> excuse me, is to get, to build a facility, not a church, because we got a church. What we want to, you know, we church enough. We, we, we need classrooms and we need facility large enough that we could employ people and that we can bring young people and give them hope, bring them out of the project areas and show them an area of town that would help encourage them and in, you know empower them to be positive young men in the community. That's right. I want to be able to educate them, not so much to join our church, but to join the body of Christ. So our vision for this ministry is to partner with those that are in our community, with the, uh, the police department. We want to partner with our city officials so when things are needed within our city, they know where to come the house because we've partnered with them and develop a relationship with them when men come out of the prison camps and when people are coming from places that they don't have anywhere else to go we can provide care for them and get them back into a working society that is a multiplicity vision yes sir yes sir and that's what it our plans are it, it, com it you know, compasses so much and it covers so much and you know that's what the Bible talks about yes sir Yes, and um, I like what you're saying about the fact that, you know, we're, we're, we're not really just simply trying to just build a church. No, that's not what we're I want to do. We're really trying yeah. to build a people. That's exactly right. And so that that's what Jesus first, that's what, that's what, you know, that's what Jesus first is all about. Once that begin to take place, yes. you are able to see that God intervenes and he move on your behalf and on my behalf. Yes. So this is, this is so God, it almost lead us to the next thing that I was going to ask you, and that was based upon the things that you're endeavoring to do in the ministry. Yes, yes. And you just you just basically explained that every bit of it. Yes, almost sir. like in a nutshell, um, you know, you know what you're endeavoring to do in the ministry. So it, it it makes my heart rejoice. Yes, sir. Because the Bible declares that time and chance happen to them all. That's exactly right. And I believe that you have taken yes this opportunity. Yes, sir. Because opportunity has knocked on your door. Yes, sir. And because this opportunity has knocked on your door, you have taken this opportunity this time and this chance to elevate what God has Absolutely. given you in your lessons from the past Absolutely. to build up Absolutely. Jesus first Absolutely. in the ministry that he's called you to work in. What else can we do? That's what we put here for. Mm. We're here to make a difference and change every possible life that we can do change. And, you know, I, I'm not trying to do like the church up the street or the church around the corner right. or the pastor up the street. Mm -hmm. uh, that's far from me. I'm not, uh, I, I've never been intimidated by others and what they're doing. I just know what God has assigned Eric Mason to do. And I'm sticking to my guns and I'm going to stand firm on that. And I'm not going to back down from that. So, you know, many, I have many great leaders that come across my path. I've had great opportunities where people have made offers to me, and I knew that they saw the gift in my abilities, and that's what they wanted. They didn't want me. They wanted my gifts and my abilities. So what I had to do was stay rooted and grounded in what I knew I heard God say because I'm not looking for a pastor. I'm not looking for a leader because I have a pastor. I have a leader. I do have someone that I am responsible to right. and I make sure that 
I'm constantly, I do tithe to my leader. You know, those type things that we teach our people. And because I'm a good leader follower, it makes me a good leader of leaders. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I held up that, that one figure to pause you for a minute because <laughs> you said earlier, know your place. Absolutely. And know your calling. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that, and that is so very important to knowing what, once again, you are endeavoring to do in the ministry. You know, Dr. Mason, a lot of times, you know, people are connected to the ministry based upon what you just said, you know, whose leaders have been tried by the fire and, you know, they've been made to go through. Yes. And, you know, I want, I want to say to you and ask you a question, you know, what events, you know, could you tell the people that are watching, you know, Living Strong Television broadcast, what events that you could tell them about the Lord and only the Lord that brought you through? I know you get Gave the other earlier scenario about the yes. accident. Yes. But based upon just how he have moved for you spiritually. Yes. Since you have been called into the ministry, went through the fire, and you've said so much within a nutshell already. Yes. But just give us just a little bit more about what events have happened in your life that, that have helped you to really become stronger and more elevated. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing that have uh, really helped me, as I was saying just a few minutes ago, was I had good, sound doctrinal teaching. I had a great leader, a great pastor, right. and I served her well. And because I did that, God allowed the anointing that was on her to be passed on to me. And I believe I'm living a legacy and carrying the torch of what she was doing for the last 50 years and because of that anointing and because of me being raised up under that teaching it has caused me now to become stronger not by words but f through experience right. through the going through the chains of command going through the hardships and uh, you know people are saying that you don't take all of that but I had to go through the hard knots of spirituality to get where I am. It wasn't an overnight story, overnight success. I don't have a fairy tale. This is true uh, chastisement that I had to go through. Uh, it was true rebuke that I had to take. And because of those things, it has kept me grounded and rooted to the point where I'm able to stand today. Many of these New Day era preachers, oh, man, they are going that. forth, but they hadn't gone through anything. They went to some Bible college somewhere and they gave them a good education. And I'm not knocking it by no means because I went to Bible college as well. I graduated and I believe in education, but I also believe too that God does not allow us to go through experiencing things through our walk to bring us to a point where we just become stuck. But we, so we are to transition from each era of our lives to the next level that God has called us into. And because of my discipline, and I got to keep using that word discipline right, right. because I see so many undisciplined leaders, undisciplined preachers, and because of my disciplined spirit, I had to pray, and God had to help me <laughs> to become disciplined because there was so much that my flesh was calling for right, that yeah, I had right. to pray and ask God to help me to be disciplined. So now, you know, it's no longer a fight. It's more it comes natural for me right. to know what to do. It's oh, natural for me to know what to buy into and what not to buy into. That's and right. I move from the struggling point now mm -hmm. to now at a discipline point where it doesn't take me a long time to hear God because I know his spirit now. I know how he functions and flows. I don't have God to a science, but we've been dealing with each other for so long now until I know <laughs> when God said, go ahead and do this. <laughs> and I know when God says, sit down and rest somewhere because this is not the right thing. And because I was able to make good decisions, oh, my God, I can't say this enough. Sometimes people, I tell people all the time, I'm no fool by long shot because you don't get where I am in ministry if you weren't disciplined and know how to make decent decisions with the help of God. And because I was able to make decent decisions, it has kept me strong, and it's caused us to have a strong ministry. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I'll tell you, Prophet, you know, God is raising up a nation of people right here. I'm by no means saying we're better than anybody, but I can tell you we are a strong ministry, and we're not getting weaker 
we're getting stronger. The people are getting stronger. I'm seeing manifestation upon the people because it starts with the leader. When the leader becomes disciplined, when the leader becomes anchored, the people become disciplined, the people become anchored. When the leader becomes tuned into what God is saying for this day and time and this season, this dispensation that we're in, then what happens is it flows outward to the body and the people start flowing in the order of God. So the things that other pastors sit and share with me, I don't have those testimonies because I'm constantly pouring out to them from what God has poured into me out of experience, out of knowledge, out of wisdom, and out of the power of God through his word that will give you the distinctive instructions on in how to function in today's society and be successful in ministry. Your church does not have to shut down. Your ministry does not have to fold up. Your church does not have to dis dissolve into nothing. Would you say that to somebody that's yeah, watching? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your you ministry, that? your ministry don't have to dissolve. Your church don't have to be shut down because if God called you and God chose you and He gave you assignment, sometimes as even as pastors, we got to go back and sometimes uh, retract our tracks to find out oh where we God. messed up at because so right. sometimes yes. what's happening is. Yes. The, the mess up that we made oh, is affecting how we grow today. And we can't grow until we right. go back that's and right. deal with that place where you can't just sweep it under the rug. You can't leave it. You got to go back into where it was the mess up. You got to track back and say, you know, this is where I made my error. That's good. This is where I messed Somebody's up. Somebody's watching, is listening yeah. to this. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did yes. you hear that? Going uh. back, this is very important. Going back to where the mistake was made. That's exactly right. Retracking, retracing, find out what happened, what went wrong. That's exactly and right. And then trusting God's will to return back into your life to bring elevation That's back exactly right. so that the prominence of your life can begin to take place. Exactly. Wow, Dr. Mason, I will tell yeah. you what, that has blessed me tonight. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. And so that was like the beginning of a new beginning. Absolutely. And at that point... I saw God release in the house. And now we don't have a problem with finances. We're not, we, we, don't, we don't have a problem with why folk don't show up and why the people not doing what they're supposed to do because we've empowered them now. Right. And now it's becoming a lifestyle, not a behavior. A lifestyle. Yeah. I like that second yeah. nature. Yeah, yeah. It's, and so this is the reason why people connect with leaders who are set on fire and Absolutely. who got strong vision for the Lord. Yes, sir. And I believe that in the midst of everything that has taken place with you thus far, I believe that the best is yet to come. It is yet to come, and I'm looking with expectancy for it to show up. All right. Oh, well, this, yes. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I know that y'all are excited about this on tonight. I know that you're excited about it on tonight. And I thank God for each and every one of you that are watching. Yes. And, you know, our time is winding up a little bit. And we got a few more things to talk about. And we want to thank you for being patient. But what I want to do is just take just a brief moment here to once again remind you that, yes, I am interviewing uh, Dr. Eric Mason of the Jesus First Christian Community Fellowship Church. And he's located at 5... 5647 Ogeechee Road, right here in the Savannah, Georgia area, whose uh, uh, wife name is um, uh, First Lady Sabrina Mason. Now, the reason I'm saying all that is because Dr. Mason has said some things that is of quality and of very importance. And, and, and based upon what he has released within this fastest 30 minutes, you know this is the fastest 30 minutes in broadcast, <laughs> we want you to be aware yes. that God is doing phenomenal things right here at Jesus First. Yes, sir. Based upon his yes, calling, sir. based upon his testimony, yes. saying that you cannot run from God. No, you can't And do so it. also we would like to remind you that we will be coming to Dr. Mason's church. Yes, sir. Later on this week. Yes, sir. A matter of fact, Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, and that time is going to be at six o'clock p.m. That's going to be at six o'clock p.m. on Sunday and Monday at seven p.m. and Monday at seven p.m. Yes, sir. And I, and I know that with the word that Dr. Mason has released on tonight, there are so many people that are blessed. That yes. is enough word to just set you back on fire. Yes, sir. But before our time run out, Dr. Mason, <laughs> I've got to get to the good part. Turn this back over to you. Yes, what sir. is your spiritual outlook for 2013 for this year? Oh. 
all, I am so excited. I want to just say this. I was on my way back from the inauguration from, for President Obama. Oh. And on my way back home, I heard God say these words because everybody, know. yes, everybody's been talking about 13 is a bad number and 13 is a, a number that bad luck and 13 this. And on my way home, God said to me, he said, this is going to be the year that I'm going to be doing some odd things in your life. <laughs> some odd things and some uh, odd miracles and some odd supernatural things are going to be happening. And, and, you know, people say, well, you know, 13 is such a bad number. I said, well, if you think about it, when Jesus was sitting there at the table, he called all the disciples in. Before he showed up, there oh. were only 12 disciples. Oh, God. He's but the moment the Jesus showed up, that was it became 13, 13 people at the table. Yes, yes, yes. 13 God reveal, is God you. himself Ooh. showing up, and now is specifically in control. So the 12 couldn't function. Not like they needed to until the 13th man that means showed up that to Jesus the table. Is show up so Jesus is going to show up here in, in 2013. 2013. Oh my God. Oh and Jesus God. first. Right here, and Jesus, Jesus first ministry yes, sir. right here right in Savannah, here. Georgia, in Savannah Georgia, Georgia with Dr. Eric Mason. Yes, I believe sir. that. I believe it. I believe and I it. I hear the Lord saying that the people that are watching, their walls are coming down. Their walls are coming down. I'm telling you, and things are going to be happening. Inheritances, monies, finances, things that's been held up. You know, for those that are sitting around talking about I don't see it God told me to tell you close your mouth and just trust and believe because I've already spoken that this is the year of odd things oh yeah. boy yes God I didn't yes. get a chance to tell him I did not get a chance <laughs> he brought it out I'm telling you, you know that I do it's he brought great, it out with yes, great expectation that's confirmation <laughs> yes sir that is confirmation yes sir because even one of the ministers the, the cameraman he was talking about the same thing about this year and so much of what God is doing Yes. And he's giving me, but this is a, but the, 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 we got to move on. But because he's letting me know that this is the preparation. This Absolutely. Is one word, prepare. Prepare. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And I will tell you how. As, and I know we've got the clothes because this is good. <laughs> well, we're, we're watching spoke, our time. Yes, but I, I, but we're, I spoke, we're okay. Yes, I spoke to the people. And I told them on the very first Sunday of this year, I said, the Lord spoke to my heart and told me to tell you to write down 13 things that you wanted God to do for you this year. Oh, and boy. what I want you to do is every each time God does one of the 13 things, he said, I want you to scratch it off the list and I want you to give me a praise like you've never given me before. <laughs> what the praise will do is it will give me permission to go on and do the next thing that needs to be done. But it won't get done until you first scratch it and praise him over it. Scratch and praise. You, you understand? So like once that. you scratch and praise him, scratch. it gives God the praise. initiative to go on and do the next thing. And, and already I had, and I'm to make a long story short, one of the gentlemen, the gentleman that plays our organist, he said to me, he said, Pastor, I want you to know that God is so good that the other day I've, I've, I've already gotten already four things and it's just march going into march and he said already god has done four things already off of the list and one of the things was i wanted god to give me a brand new house last week god gave him and his family the brand new house and on sunday he scratched it off the list and Thank began to give god praise lord. this is the lord's doing and this marvelous oh, in god. our eyes all i can tell god. you is trust him Believe him, obey him, and listen, I can't say this enough. The day for talking that God is not speaking through the men and women of God, listen, for some of you, the only hope you got is your man of God, your woman of God, and it's time for us to know that when God speaks to us, without all the reservation, without all the drama, without all the background checks, without all of the extra and all the other things that we feel that like we have to do, God wants us this year to hear his word and take it immediately and apply it into our lives. Dr. Mason, quickly, right quick. If you had a word of encouragement yes, sir. to give to the people, and I know that you done said so much already, <laughs> but what would you say in the last few closing minutes to the people before I make the final announcement? I will encourage you to stay focused and stay grounded in what God has already said. 
not what he's going to do, but what he's already said on your behalf and it's currently concerning your life. And just know, as you maintain your consistency, here's the key word, consistency. As you remain consistent with God, he'll come remain consistent with you. And before you realize those odd things that me and prophet has been talking about, God will already begin to put those into play. Believe what I tell you, if I be a man of God, your season and your time is fastly approaching you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's fastly yeah, approaching. You have just God heard. going to do it suddenly. <laughs> you, you have just heard from Dr. Eric Mason at Jesus First Community uh, Fellowship Church yes, right sir. here in the beautiful city of Savannah, Savannah Georgia. Georgia. And he is located at 56. 5647 o what? OGG Road. Road. Yes, sir. Where the word of the Lord is coming forth. And so those for you who have been watching and saying, God, I have enjoyed Dr. Mason. I want to get there. You make sure you be in contact with up and coming events based upon what God is doing at Jesus First and come in fellowship with Dr. Mason yes, sir. and Jesus First right here in Savannah. And we would also like to thank you for tuning in to the Living Strong TV Network. And in order to get us, all you got to do is log on, Living Strong TV dot com where i am your host once again yes, prophet scotty lee johnson based upon that which comes out of the whosoever will outreach ministry of risland south carolina under the leadership of pastor josie balstick we would also like to remind each and every one of you in the last few minutes that we have a revival and meetings coming up even in the newington georgia area this week this week wednesday thursday and friday Hey, we'd like to say to each and every one of you, thank you for tuning in to Living Strong. Thank Dr. Mason thank you, for joining us on today. Yes, sir. And we would like to say to each and every one of you, that's our time. Thank you for yours. We'll yes. see you next time. Have a good night.